Lord. See, the thing is, God give us power over all the power of the enemy. Yeah, and the thing is, we are healed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we, need, you know, we just need to focus on the things of God. If you listen to the news media, we'd all have, our, we'd have people out from under the bed to see what's going on. But you know, the thing is, you know, I'm not going to live like that because I believe God's given us an allotted down the count of days. And no, nothing that the devil can manufacture can take you out before it's your day. I believe that. Sure, I, I believe God, your days are numbered before the Lord, and I believe God's going to take care of us. I just believe that with all my heart, and, but I'm not going to be stupid, but at the same time, I'm going to believe God. And I'm telling you, if my wife wasn't in, in, in the condition she's in, the devil would just have to take a hike because I'd live my life like I've always lived my life, and he'd have to prove to me he could kill my sorry hide because I'm not going to live in fear, and I'm going to let the devil put fear on me because God got, church, we got to understand the Word of God. It, it works. And when we cast our care on him, he cares for us, and he'll bring us through the storms. The thing is, so many times we get in the storm, we think, God, where are you at? He's right there. He's waiting. So many times we can handle the storm, and he's saying, oh, faithless generation, what are you going to do? Come on, church. We got, he's saying, I gave you power to work this thing. Why don't we work it? Let's work this thing like we've never worked it and believe God's word, and we'll see the storm of life subside. Stand, get out of your boat and stand. Stand on this storm and say, God, if God be for me, who can be against me? It's time we quit running around like a bunch of whoop dogs and stand on the power of God's word and say, I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. So let's believe God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Didn't say that would be formed against you. But see, I'm telling you, church, I've been preaching. We've been trying to do Bible study because God's people, for the most part, are ignorant to the Word of God. They want to come to church and jump and shout and twist and hop about, and when they go home, let the devil spur them all the way home. Let's take the, take the authority God gave us. I feel the Holy Ghost, if you can't tell. Yeah, I'm mad enough to fight. Amen, and I'm telling you, it's time that we put you on. Know, because the, the battle's not yours anyhow. Stand still and see the salvation of God. But do you know that if you ever notice in the, bottom, the armor, there's nothing for your backside. So when you turn your tail to run, you're open prey. So let's face the giant of, that we're fo- facing and say we're overcomers. Let's pray. Let's have church. How many come to have church? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. Lord, we, we pray over our nation this morning. Father, we plead, plead the blood of Jesus. And God, if this thing don't do nothing else, God, let your people, Lord, which was called by your name, learn that they can turn to you, Lord, in the time of trouble. And God, that you'll see them through. Lord, let there be a revival spirit spark in this thing. Lord, the enemy's done everything he can to stop our churches. They're doing everything they can to do what they can to hinder the move of God because they're scared, Lord, that the people of God is going to rise up and going to take our country back. And we're going to do that, Lord. We're not, we're not going to allow the enemy or nobody else to take this nation, one nation under God, from us. Lord, we're going to stand on the principles of God's Word and we're going to rebuke the devourer for the Lord's sake because, Lord, we are overcomers because you overcame it all so we can be overcomers. Lord, we ask this morning for a special anointing upon this service that we can walk through the storm and, God, it won't overtake us. Lord, we believe, God, the things of this life that we can't keep them from coming sometimes, but we know that you're the captain of our ship. Lord, we, just, we cast our care on you. We look to you. You are the author and finish of our faith. Lord, where would we be if you hadn't loved us enough? Lord, you loved us enough to die for us, to save us. Now, Lord, you love us enough to take care of us. Now, we plead the blood of Christ over this body of believers this morning and, Lord, over our communities, Lord, over our country. Lord, we ask, Lord, you just work. We pray for our president, Lord. God, you give him understanding. Lord, don't allow him to be hoodwinked by a bunch of people that will try to destroy him. Lord, they give him the wisdom that will scare him, Lord, but then they're afraid anyhow. But, Lord, give him that wisdom that he needs to lead this nation into a place where we can see the things of God. We thank you, Lord, for our nation. We ask, Lord Jesus, just as we enter into this service this morning, that you just let the blessings of God be poured out upon your people, Lord, and let them receive the things of God. So as we say thank you, Lord, for those that sowed in the kingdom of God, Lord, they, they've given. And we just ask, Lord, God, that you said as we give, it'd be given back to us. Press down, shake it, get full, and run it over. 
I believe, God, the blessing of God will overtake the people of God when they begin to sow into the kingdom of God. And we ask, Lord Jesus, you just bless the hands of their labor, Lord. And those things that they give into the kingdom of God, we believe, God, that you'll meet their need. Lord, your riches are going because we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You've been in a storm. Seems like forever. Seems like forever. Like so.
say he'll never leave you. You can ride out your storm. I promise you, you can ride out any storm as long as Jesus is with you. Thank you all. I'm glad to know that he will never leave you. Never leave you. Somebody say never leave you. No man shall pluck you out of his hand. Don't say we can't walk well to the will of God. We can walk away from God. But I promise you one thing. He will never leave you. So this morning... If you've got your Bible, I want you to turn with me to Mark's Gospel, chapter 19, or chapter 9. We're going to verse 14, and we're going to start. And uh, I hope you get to, to about verse 26. So I hope you brought your lunch. So. <laughs> so we'll see how we get. You know, I, it's, just hold on to Jesus. And I got this in my notes for the day. And, you know, I read this yesterday, and I thought this was worth reading this morning. This is Mother Teresa's quote was, when Jesus is all you ha get, when, when Jesus is all you've got, you will discover that Jesus is all you need. That's the little lady that took care of the people in India, and she just believed God, and she, she chose to stay with those people and to take care of them. When Jesus is all you've got, you will discover that Jesus is all that you need. How many know Jesus is all I need? All I need. Amen. So yeah, I'm just glad to know this morning, you know, Jesus will always make you better if you don't get bitter. I'm going to say that again because, you know, that went over somebody's head. Jesus will always make you better if you don't get bitter. And then if you don't get, if you get bitter, God can't help you. Mark's gospel, we, 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 just, we see here, we jump in the middle of this chapter where Jesus just, they just come off the mountain where the great things was happening and, you know, they just come, you know, Peter, James, and John, and Jesus been on the mountain and they've been, they've been having church all by themselves and they're just having a good time and they're just rejoicing in the Lord and they're, I mean, they come down, they start down off the mountain, ain't, it like, ain't that just like life? You know, you know, the devil, you know, really can't do nothing to you when you're in the presence of God and whenever you're just shouting and you're just having a good time. But whenever you begin to walk down the mountain, begin to walk, when, before you get home sometimes, the devil's done on your back, done telling you all kinds of stuff, trying to talk in your one ear, and you're trying to, trying to remember what God spoke to you in the service, and he's trying, to, he's trying to get you to forget the things that God has made you promise a lot of times. And, you know, before you can get to where you're going, you know, you done, you done forgot all the things that God has done for you. And you begin to question things that's going on around about you, and you begin to think a lot of things. And you know, I know you know, just my life is for, since 1977 has been totally involved in church. I mean, since 1988, and I started preaching. You know, I know that God, or 1989, when I started preaching, my whole my whole wardrobe changed because everything I had in my wardrobe had something to do with church. My wife's clothes looked like church. My clothes looked like church. You know, everything we had looked like church. Looked like we was pleasing to God. And you know, and, and it don't. It, but it don't keep the enemy from being mad at you. You know, and you know, y'all know the story. You know, and then in February, you know, when we, when the doctor told her that Linda had leukemia, you know, it was like, why? Lord, what did, what, did, what did I do wrong to keep, you know, some, could I have done something to prevent this from happening to my wife? Could I do this? And, you know, the thing is, you don't understand sometimes life's situation, but the thing is, you always understand that God is with you. You know, you can't, you can't maybe get out of that situation, but you need to know that God is with you. And it doesn't matter, you know, if I make my bed in hell, oh, Lord, thou art there. If I ascend into the heavens, Lord, I know you're going to be there. It don't matter where I'm at, Lord, I know I want, I want to go anywhere without you. But so many things in our life, you know, and you walk in my house, you see a Bible here, you see a Bible there, because, you know, I'm, if I'm walking through the house and something comes to my mind, I'll pick up a Bible and I'll look at something because I don't want to forget what God is trying to tell me at that moment because so many times we, he that hath ears need to hear what the Spirit is saying, and so many times we, we're so busy that we don't have time to listen to what God is saying. 
So there's plenty of ammunition, if you want to call it that, laying around in my house. And, you know, if you go down look on, downstairs and look on my desk, there's probably eight or ten Bibles. And when I'm studying, they're all open. So why do you need that many? I don't know, but I, it just works. And uh, so what you do is, you know, once you get one scripture and you need another scripture, you leave that scripture there because you're going to have to come back. And that way you don't have to remember where you was at. Maybe that's just an old thing. When you're young and you've got a good, sharp mind, maybe you don't need all that, but you know, I need all the help I can get anymore. But anyway, you don't understand things. Peter and John and they come down off the mountain with Jesus, and they see this great multitude. And there's, must be, there's some kind of ruckus going on, and they're not understanding everything. Let's read a little bit, and then we'll try to preach. And verse 14 says, When he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. The scribes are religious people. That's one thing I don't like as a religious person. They are nothing but trouble. Amen. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching. Oh, they're going to question everything you're doing because you're not doing it like they have always done it. And because they're, you're not... You didn't quote the right scripture when you took your text and all this. Stuff. And they're always questioning everything that you're doing because it don't fit their criteria. So they're wanting you to fit the mold. They're wanting you to make sure that you get everything right. And they had a real problem. The scribes and the Pharisees, had a, they had a real problem with Jesus. He didn't fit the mold. He was, you know, he, was, he, was he came with a gospel hammer. He broke the mold. And he came, and, but the thing is, well, I see this thing, and there's a, this, any time God begins to do something, that you can get rest assured the devil's going to try to stir up something. And, it, you know, oh. and here's a good point. And more times than not, it's religious people that stir it up. Mm. See, this is the whole thing. Jesus is here, and he's, he, he's ministering to people, and the people are being healed, people are being delivered, people have been, you know, all kinds of things. Miracles are happening, you know. He's turning water into wine, all kinds of things. And they're saying, you know, we've got to stop this fella. And he just keeps doing what he's doing, and, you know. And the thing is, because he was God manifested in the flesh, but he was flesh. Church, I want you to understand, God, Jesus was God, man, but he did never, he did never do anything as God. Jesus did nothing as God. It would have defeated the purpose if he had if he come down here and put on flesh and he done everything as God. It wouldn't have proved to us one thing. He never did anything until he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Except talk to us, except talk to us with them in the in the temple at the age of twelve. I know my Bible. See, but the thing is, that's bothering somebody because he was God. Yeah, he was God in the flesh, but he didn't do anything as God. You're going to get this, and you're going to chew this until I, God, you spit it out one. Because, see, we are thinking, you know, Jesus had all this power. Yeah, this power I have, I give it unto you. See, you, he did nothing apart from his Father. We, need, we can't do nothing apart from Jesus. But we can do nothing without the help of Jesus, but the thing, he gave us the power to do the works of God. But so many times we were waiting on God to do something. And God said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. How much is all? Somebody leave, some, somebody leave part of all out. So here we are. We see this thing, and here they're, they're questioning the... Uh, the question of the disciples. He left the other nine behind. And they're down there. And they're, they, here we are. We're getting ready to get in the story. Let's just read on. And straightway all the people that, were, that beheld him were greatly amazed, running to him, saluted him. They saw Jesus come. Oh, we got her now. See, and this is... A lot of people, I don't know how to say this, a lot of people won't receive nothing except from their favorite preacher. It don't matter. 
Or you ever notice how people will get all excited about a revival? And they may have one of the best preachers on God's planet, but they'll get more excited about somebody else than who the gift that God's given them. Oh, yes. And the thing about it is, this, the, the pastor or, or the chief bishop or the whatever you are in your association, you know, he cares more about you than the fellow that's riding in on the bus or riding in, on the, in the limousine. Because he's going to put up with you whenever everything's going south in your life, whenever you're complaining about everything, whenever you've got more reasons not to serve God than you've got to serve God, the pastor's the one's having to put up with you. Amen. Not the evangelist right in. I used to I love to evangelize. So now I can skin their hide, leave, the, leave them behind, let the pastor deal with them. Yeah. I could kick them a little bit, drag them a little bit, and then say, I'm gone. I did it for years, and they still come up. There. And the thing is, you know, and then one day, yeah. So here we are, and straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were verse we're still in verse fifteen, were greatly amazed, and ran to him, saluted him, and he asked the scribes, "What question you with them? What you talking to them about?" He knew what they was talking about. He did have that ability, you know. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And I've seen some of them. And whosoever, and wherever. <laughs> Sorry, just a little fun. Don't get mad at me. How many's ever seen anybody with a dumb spirit? Whew. Boy, and I'll tell you what's the truth. You, you, after a while, you keep being dumb around me, I'm going to say something. Anyhow, this is a different type of dumb here, but anyhow. Now, wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he, he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away, and I spake to thy disciples, and they should have cast him out, and, and they could not. Begin to think about that. How many people blame church for not working? We go to church, we pay our tithes, we sing in the choir. We, we teach Bible study. We, we mow the Christ. We wash the windows. We do. Uh, look, why ain't it working? Why is this going on in my life if I'm doing everything right? Why is my wife sick if I've been living for God since I was a young man? Why has this come to my house? What am I doing wrong? You ever ask God that question? What's in my life that's keeping you from working? Lord, what's going on? I've seen, I've seen devils cast out. I've seen the lame walk. I've seen all these things. I've prayed for a while and nothing's happening. I pay my tithes. I give it to office. I give in the offering. I help people, poor people. I do the. I try to do everything that this Bible tells me to do. How about you? Because if you don't do what this word says, God's not obligated to one thing. You can run around here and shout, and speak in tongues, and cut flips, and go out of here and live like a dog and cuss somebody out. You might as well be living for the devil because you're about you're a hyphen hyper. And God, there's no such thing as a hyper hyper. You shouldn't get mad enough to cuss nobody. Because God, that you need to sanctify yourself. That means to set yourself apart. Be ye holy, for he is holy. See, you've got, and he said to sanctify yourself. We're saying, God, do it. God said, you do it. I gave you power to do it. But you can't, I'm telling you, church, you can't run around with your 
birdie finger hung out your window. You know, what? Come on. Well, the Lord knows I'm only flesh. You better crucify that devil. You need to nail you need to nail that flesh on the cross and say, God, it's not my will, but thy will be done. Help me to overcome these things. Church, there's too many people playing church and not enough people having church. And until we learn how to have church, see if this thing don't work at home, it won't work here. We're trying to work it here and live like some kind of fool at home. You got all that out of that? I sure did. I don't see that in there. You need to read it again. Lord, what's going on in my life? I'm doing everything right. I brought, I brought, them, I brought my child here, and the pastor couldn't help him. There's a service here. Oh, it's been several years ago. And I, the Lord prompted me to do a certain thing, which he'll do that from time to time. And for, to pray for people with a certain, I don't even remember what it was, but I remember somebody come up with a different issue, and I said, stay right there. People got their drawers in a wad, because I didn't quit what God told me to do and take care of what somebody else wanted me to do. Well, who's the boss here? Jesus. He cares about where you're at. I'm going to show you something in a minute. But so many times we've got to do what he wants us to do to get to where we're at. Now, I had people say, you made me mad. I said, good. What you going to do about it? Go to church somewhere else, I guess. Because I'm not going to quit doing what Jesus, what I feel like the Spirit of God is telling me to do. I don't care if it makes everybody on the planet mad. I'd rather be standing right, in right stand with God. When it's all said and done, he's going to look at me and say, well done, or you're gone. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, because if I don't do what the Lord, I'm a worker of iniquity if I don't do what the Lord says. That don't mean that you're a sinner. You're just not pleasing the will of God and the work of God in your life. You're just doing what you want to do when you want to do it, bless God. And it'll all work out in the end. Yeah, you better. It would be better not to have known than known and turn away from it. So here we are. So here's this man who's come to church. He's brought his son. This has got a devil or a spirit. A deaf and dumb spirit. And look at what he describes his child to a T. I mean, what's this? He says, verse 18 says, And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him and he foameth. He begins to foam at the mouth. And he gnashes his teeth. And he's pounding the way. He's, he's losing so much weight. If you don't do something, he's going to starve to death. That's what that word pineth means. He, he's losing all of his weight. He's losing so much weight because he can't eat because of this thing that's going on in his life. Look it up when you get home. Don't use your smartphone right now and try to prove me wrong. And I spake to thy disciples, and they could not cast him out. And I spake to the I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. I said, Help me. Help me. They couldn't do nothing to help me. He answered. He answered him and said, Oh, faith. Now he's talking to this feller. This church goer here. This chief deacon. This great tither. This whoever. He said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? 
Now, how long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now, everybody gets set up to see this show. Because they knew once they get him to Jesus, they've seen him walk on water. They've seen him cast out the devil. They've seen him turn water into wine. They've saw the, the lepers cleanse. They've saw all this. And they knew, well, once we get him to Jesus, it's going to be all right. Once you get to Jesus, it's going to be all right. But don't, don't get so excited if Jesus don't get in a hurry. <laughs> you ever notice, you know, he, Jesus never got, in the, you got excited over, their, over your situation. When he was asleep in the ship, And the boat was taking on water. Jesus said, I don't know how he's sleeping. I guess a water bed. I don't know. <laughs> and he was down there asleep. And Peter goes down there and he says, Master, Master, careth not that we perish. He says, get up, man, do something. Get up. Don't you care that we're about to perish? He said, you faithless generation. Where's your faith at? What's he saying? Why don't you take care of it? Why don't you take care of it? I'll get to that in a minute. More stuff, more food for thought here. See, so many times we're wanting God to ride in on a white horse and do everything for us. I tell Linda, I told Linda, I said, we're going to do everything we can do. Leave the results up to God. I'm not one of those people that's going to sit on my blessed assurance and say, well, the Lord's going to show up one day. Well, I know the Lord's coming. I've prayed. I know he's coming to the end. The, the prince of Persia may be withstanding him, but he's on his way. As soon as they get that battle won, he'll be over on down here now. The devil wants to fight. I'll tell you, church, you all heard me tell this. When I left my wife at the hospital and cried all the way home, when I got home, I took my shirt off, rolled my sleeves up, so I said, you sap sucker, you want to fight? I said, you've got to fight. I said, I've cried my last tear. And I'm looking you in the eye, devil. If you can see my eyes, I said, I want you to know. I'm going to fight you with every bit of power I've got within me to see your hide under my feet. And I'll not cry another tear. Sometimes you just got to say, I'm just going to sit there and cry. My, sit there at my house for a month and cry because my wife was at the hospital and I couldn't see her. I was going to sit there and just, and, and it's easy to get into that. It's easy, you know, you're all alone. My God, we've been married for 46 years. I'm a danger five years before then. We've been together for a half a century. It would have been easy to sit there and just cry and cry and cry and not answer my phone and let him and get depressed. Tell the truth, stay in the church. And that, who would have been winning that battle? The ignorant devil. If it had got me where I'd have called Brother Ron and said, I just don't think I can preach no more. Until this, I get through this thing, brother, I just, you know. You've got to do what God called you to do in order to see a victory or a breakthrough. You can't quit doing what God called you to do. Because your victory is in your anointing. Your victory is in your call. It's not whenever you crawl under your bed and you look, just peep out every now and then and see if the devil's looking. Your victory is in your anointing. Some battles will train you. But some battles you need to be trained before you get into battle. <laughs> but some, some battles will train you. When you don't know what to do, you just got to say, God, I've done all I know to do. So here we are. So he's saying, you know, this child, when this spirit comes on him, he flops, he gets on the ground, he wallows like a hog, foams at the mouth, and uh, I can't do nothing with him. He's out of control. See, the devil don't, <laughs> how do I say this? The devil don't care to show his hind end in front of Jesus. 
I don't know how to say it. He will manifest. <laughs> he will manifest himself in the presence of Jesus just to see how what's going to happen. Especially if that Rick thinks his days are numbered. Oh, it's hot in here. And he answered them and said, I read this, but I'm going to read it again. Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer? Bring him unto me. Here he comes. Here he is, loving you. Bag of bones with the Spirit. His daddy couldn't do nothing with him. I'm going to read that to you. There's situations the devil likes to get you in where you feel he feels like he's in, the devil's in control. No matter how much you love God, he wants, the devil wants you to think that he's in control of your situation. And they brought him, verse 20, watch this. Now, how many people would have freaked out? <laughs> Lord help me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. What did I just say he said? What he did. He now what's this response? I've seen this yeah, Tuesday. I've been this has been simmering since Tuesday. Like a you know, good roast in a crock pot. It's been simmering. It's really tender to me this morning, see. After you cook a good roast in a crock pot, you know, you just take your fork and just peel you off some of it because it's just, you didn't cook it too fast. You didn't, you didn't mess it up. It's just right for eating. So if you chew on this a minute, it'll, you'll swallow it real easy because it's really tender. I just made somebody hungry. I like to cook anyhow, too. I like to cook. And, he, and there he is. Here's his, here's his child. Flopping like a catfish, foaming at the mouth. I was going to get a demonstration, but I just, just I figured as long as I was going to talk, it, somebody would be tired. Watch it. Now, here's, they brought him to him. Now, get this in your mind. You got to see this thing. Maybe you already have. This kid falls on him, and Jesus turns to the Father. He said, how long ago is it since this came upon him? How long has he been like this? <laughs> he wasn't even in a hurry. And he said, of a child, a while. He's been like this since he was a child. And Jesus said, you know, they're just saying all the times, and his daddy goes into this speech, you know, why didn't he get this later? Why didn't he get all this information after the child was better? I'm going to show you. Because, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Because he can't fix that until he fixes that. Until he fixes the daddy, he can't fix the child. Because he's going to take that child back in the same situation. Shining a cocoa beside. You got to understand that. See, until he fixes this, he can't fix that. And Jesus was going to fix him before he fixed the child. And he's talking to this daddy about this thing, and his daddy's going through the whole deal about how long he's been going through all this thing and how, how bad it's been. And, you know, he's done everything. He's been to every witch doctor. He's been to every sorcerer. He's been to everywhere but the electric chair. And he can't get nothing to help him. Ooh. But Jesus said, how long has it been like this? Well, for a while. Been doing this since, since he's a child, you know, and I, 
I just didn't know what else to do. I've done everything. I, it's out of my control. Really. Really. Let's read on. I'm loving it. It's like, you know, cracking a lid on it every now and then, smelling that thing. <laughs> no, but you notice, I want to, before I read anymore, I want to show, watch, watch the attitude of the fellow. Would you pay attention to the attitude of the fellow, the dad? When he came to Jesus, he said, I brought him to your disciples, and they couldn't help us. He had this attitude. I brought him to church and see what I've got. Nothing can, nothing's changed. Now he had this arrogant attitude that if I, I bring him to church, it'll be all right. He was wanting to put it the blame on the disciples. How, how, have you ever heard these people like to blame everything? You know, I wasn't my daddy's favorite child, and that's why I'm the way I am. Mom and daddy liked Wilson better than me. That's why I was a hellion. I never got none of the nice toys. He didn't either. We didn't have no money. <laughs> but we, we, you talk to people, well, my mama didn't like me growing up. You know, my boss don't like me. There's always a reason that they're in the, sh in the situation they're in. They never look in the mirror. If I'd have just had a mama to love me, I wouldn't be this way. Yeah, you'd have found another reason. You'd find something else. Because the thief come up but to kill, steal, and destroy. And if he, as long as he can keep your attitude wrong, God can't fix what's wrong. This ain't psychology. This is Bible college. Because, see, nothing fixes stinking thinking except the Word of God. You've got to wash yourself with the water of the Word. You can be in a drug through every hell hole between here and Chicago and drug back, but whenever you cast your care on God, God will wash you and make you a new creation in Christ Jesus, and the old things will pass away, forgetting those former things. Come on, church. We can run around and feel sorry for ourselves till Jesus comes, or we can say, God, you love me enough to show up and save me. You love me enough to deliver me out of the place that I was in. You delivered me from alcohol 1977, Lord. How dare me to go back on what you've done for me? I can't help what happened. I, can't, I, can, I can tell you how it feels as a 15-year-old boy to tell you, to somebody tell you your daddy's dead. I can tell you how that feels, and it feels like hell. To know that you'll never be able to sit down at the dinner table again and eat dinner with your daddy. It stinks to the highest heaven, and the devil will use that to drive you right into the pit of hell and run roughshod over you until somebody prays a prayer of faith, until somebody drags you out of that thing. It stinks to the high heaven. If there's one thing, if there's anything that I do in, in this life, it's to see my wife heal because I don't want to, I don't want her to, that my grandbabies have to come to my house and sit down at my table and not be able to eat dinner with their grandma. Amen. They love her so much, they'll do, they'll do anything for her and her dare me to just say, well, whatever we'll be, we'll be. The devil is a lie. Amen. That sucker wants to fight, I'm a fighter. I promise you one thing, if I, when I get to heaven, I hope God gives me the golden gloves of heaven for fighting the devil. Well, I refuse to throw in the towel. I will not surrender because God gave me victory. God gave me power, and he gave me the victory. He gave you the victory. All we have to do is go into the ring and say, I come, come after my belt. So, 
this, Jesus is carrying on with this conversation with this fellow. And he's talking to us. And, oh, you know, and he's going on. Now, see, how tired would a kid been or somebody been here foaming and wallowing right now while I've been preaching? If I'd have had somebody to fall, foam and wallow, I don't know if I could get, put apple seltzer in your mouth or something. Everybody would think something's going on. But anyhow, see what I'm saying? Illustrated sermons for me don't work because I'm too long-winded. Something might happen to the illustration. <laughs> but anyhow, watch this. I'm about to get down here to where I want to preach. And now this guy's a whole attitude. Watch it. He was a little arrogant when he first came in there. See, it's easier to get from something from God when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I know the Word of God said we can come boldly to the throne of grace and find help in time of need. I understand, but see, you can come boldly and at the same time come in humility. You can go because you know your Heavenly Father loves you enough that you, can, that you can lay your head in the lap of Jesus and you cry tears and say, Lord, I've done all I know to do. But I don't know what to do. I'm at the end of my rope, if you would. What can I do now? I've done it all. Look at my child. He's withering away to nothing. His spirit is killing my child. What am I to do? What am I to do? Verse 23. Richard, you got a handkerchief. I left my home. I don't care if it's, I'm sweating. It's running down my back like a river. Thank you. Bring two next week. No, I'm just kidding. And Jesus said unto him, now watch this. Now, this, see, most people, if Jesus said this to them, they'd backslide. Because we live in a generation everybody wants to be rubbed down. Everybody wants you, you know, I, I know people go through some stuff. I understand that. We've all been through some stuff. But when Jesus is not talking to you to talk down to you, he's trying to bring you out. You ever received a harsh word from God you thought was a harsh word, but what it was, it was the deal breaker. It was the one that made the difference in your life. And it, when you first heard it, you're saying, oh, what did I do to get that? Anybody outside of me ever, the Lord ever just challenge you with the word? And you're thinking, well, I'm only doing pretty good. Come on. Tell the truth, stay in the church. But we live in a generation now that everybody's got to be rubbing. Everybody gets a trophy. You can be, you know, you can be, you can sneak so bad the buzzards won't pick you and you still get a trophy. Because we don't want nobody to feel bad because, you know, they're, they're really stink. So you get a trophy. So you get a trophy for stinking. Because you stink the best. <laughs> and then, you know, because it makes people feel bad, they don't give no big trophies. Everybody's trophy. First place, third, second place, third place, tenth place, they're all about this big now. Because we don't want nobody to see a big old trophy where they've won something. Because all those other little children are going to really feel bad about it. Because, you know, it's just not fair because they tried too. Well, then I had... <laughs> Well, let me get back up here, Brother Ronnie. I know what he's going to say. You know what makes us better sometimes? Losing. When you think you're good, and then you're some little old ratty team just beats the water out of you, and you, you go back to the, play, the practice field and say, if they can beat us, anybody can. Let's get let's see, figure out what we did wrong here. And a good coach will recognize what she's doing wrong. 
a good coach. And see, and they try to make, you know, try to make adjustments. See, that's what God's trying to do. He's trying to get us to make adjustments in our life so we, the devil quit running roughshod over us. All right, let me read this. I was going to read this about 15 minutes ago. One service a day, you've got to just put up with me a little longer. Jesus said unto him, Feller, Mr. Person, Richard, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. He said, it ain't on me. It's on you. If If you, Jesus said, if you can believe. He didn't say, if I can believe. This fellow's young and flopping like a catfish over here. He said, I've done everything. He said, if. What are you going to do with your if? If you can believe. He said, you ain't putting this on me. You remember that lady? We was in tent meeting over here. I don't remember her name. Do you remember her name? Surely you didn't forget her name. Hey, hey, write that down, Scott. He forgot her name. Write it down. Keep a record of it. That rig remembers everybody's name. He remembers everything about everybody, everywhere. Now, I've got him. Yeah, I got him. But anyhow, I was sitting over, to, over in the tent meeting. I was sitting in that little uh, the white Jesus truck getting ready for service. And she walks over to the truck. She pecks on the window. And I, I opened up the door. And she said, Pastor. I'm one of the pastors then. She said, Brother, Carl, I've had this issue going on in my life. I don't remember some kind of issue with her back and her legs and a whole kind of issue. Some kind of something. She said, I went all the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I, I went in there and I had all robbers to pray for me. So I said, good. Hey, she said, nothing happened. She said, and I went down to Rock Hill, South Carolina. Had Brother Shambach pray for me. And nothing happened. And I said, you hold it right there. She said, what? I said, you ain't putting that monkey on my back. I said, if you get healed tonight, it'd be because Jesus healed you, not because Carl Bishop healed you. About halfway through that service, I said, if somebody would dare jump up and shout, that God would heal them. She jumped up, and she took off running around that tent about two or three times, hollering, I'm healed, I'm healed. I didn't touch her. See, but she was wanting to try me out. She tried them other two fellows out, and she got what she get? Nothing. Why? She was looking for the help of man. I know they, had, I know them great men of God, and they had anointing. But see, when we go to looking at for the help from men, the help cometh from the Lord. And so many times, Jesus said, "You know, if you can believe, if thou canst believe." Fella, if you can believe, if. And straight for, what? Whoa, wait a minute. I've skipped all that. Oftentimes it is cast him in the fire and the waters to destroy him, but if thou canst do anything, what's what he says? And have compassion. See, he's, and this is, Another thing, I've got a whole lot of stuff going on this morning. I want you to try to remember some of it. He come, when he talked to the, met with the disciples, he was expecting a miracle. Then he come, come to Jesus, you know, expecting something else. You know, now he's saying, Lord, can't you just do something? Lord, forget the miracle, forget all that stuff. Just Can you do anything? Ain't it easy how the devil can make us to compromise? 
because we didn't get what we thought we was going to get the first time we asked. So we can, we're, we'll say, Lord, well, you know, maybe that was too hard for you, Lord. You know what I believe is? It's questioning God's ability to take care of your situation. Does God really have enough power to take care of you? That's what I, I believe in saying, Lord, I don't really believe you have enough power to take care of this thing. I know that wasn't going to go over good, and I wrote it down in my notes. That's what I'm believing. He said, Lord, I don't, you know, I just really don't know if you can take care of this or not, you know. So help my unbelief. Lord, you know, just something, you know, if I can, you know, I really don't need to see. If you can just drop a few little pennies in my cup, I'll get by. We settle so many times for so much less than what God has for us. But Lord, have mercy on my child. Watch this. Jesus said unto him that thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out. The father of the child cried out. Now he's lost. He's, he's, now he's crying. He went from this attitude, now he's crying because now he understands, you know, it's on me too. It's just not about him now, it's about me. Lord, help me. Sometimes, so many times, church in life, we, this is exactly what we need to do. We, God, we don't need to start a prayer. Our most kind and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, Father of all things, and we call, throw this spill out here. Sometimes the Lord says, uh, look, wait for us to holler, help! Help me! Help me! Oh, great God of the universe. He said, I know I'm all that, but I, you, are you drowning? Help me! Help me, Jesus. Help me. Come on, see what I'm saying? He's not looking for some kind of smooth something going on. He's just out of desperation. Help me. Lord, can you do anything now? Help me. Can we just say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And straightway the child, father of the child cried out and, and, and said with tears. See, tears running down his face. <coughs> you ever? Oh, Lord. I was always a little skinny kid growing up in school. You know, and I was meaner than a rattlesnake. And big kids like to pick on me. Big kids like to pick on me. When I got mad enough, tears started coming down my, down my eyes. I'm going to hit them somewhere. I might not get them to hit them but once. They're going to get hit somewhere, kick somewhere, bit somewhere. They're going to get something somewhere. Because I'm not seeing too good now because i got water in my eyes. You ever been there? Just get mad enough to cry. And now you're scared. You're scared. This father was crying. I said, Lord, he's scared for his child. He's scared because he's done things wrong. Maybe, I don't know what's going on here, but he's, now he's changed his attitude. I'm about to. And said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw the people come, the people came running together. He rebuked the foul spirit. Said unto him, Thou de dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. He didn't just say, You're not leaving, but you're not coming back. This is not just going to be a temporary thing. You don't have to worry about tomorrow the thing coming back. Jesus said, you come out of him and enter no more into him. Church, 
when we cast the devil out of somebody, we need to set the devil on the We need to let the devil know you ain't coming back to this house because God's going to fill this house. When God, whenever God delivered me from alcohol, God swept my house. He put his sweet spirit inside of me, and it's entered no more into me. See, that's the only way. You've got to allow God to sweep the house. Whenever God delivers you, he will purge that thing, and he'll separate you, and he will, he will keep you, and that thing can't come back. If you do it right. If you do it the Bible way. Watch this now. And the Spirit cried. Now the Spirit's crying. Jesus crying. Men's crying. Babies crying. The Spirit's crying. Everybody's crying. But the Spirit's crying for a, a different reason. And rent him sore, and came out of him. And, it's, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, he is dead. Now how would you like to be in Jesus? You cast his spirit out of him, now he's laying there dead. Oh God, you killed him! I guarantee you, Brother Steve, there was people in that crowd saying, he's killed him. Look what he's done now. He's killed him. Because many said, many said, it is so much that he is dead. He ain't flopping. He ain't foaming. He's dead. People were panicking. Jesus is standing there. He's not changed. His. When Jesus went to Jairus' house, he said, don't bother the master. He, she's dead. He put them all out. They went in. And he said, whatever he said, made I say unto thee, arise. Took her by the hand. Lift her up and presented her alive to the mother. She was dead. They already called in the mourners, the professional criers. He put them out. I love it when Jesus works. But Jesus, here he is again. Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. dead but now he's alive why because now he could go home with his father his father could take him to a house and understand what faith is that faith in God is faith in God will move the mountain but we have to learn how to speak to the mountain and tell it to be removed to yonder hence we have to learn how to speak to it, but we have to come with the right attitude. What's the attitude of most people? Lord, you owe it to us. I brought them. I've done all the right things. But remember this one thing this morning. The devil is the opportunity. He uses any opportunity to get in your head, to get in your life, to destroy your life. He'll use something to happen. You, you might have married Bozo the Clown. And it, it, it was a mess. Now, every time, <laughs> don't shake your head, Adler. And every time you think about, you know, you ended up, it was a bad marriage, you ended up divorced, and every time you think about getting married again, the devil said, remember the last time you picked a man. Look what you got last time. He's going to do anything he can, but any fault that you made in life to try to get, keep you from ever going any farther. Because as long as we're less than what God called us to be, we'll never be what God called us to be. As long as we have, you know, allow these situations to keep us in these places, we can never, like the cream on the milk, we can never rise to the top. I know I'm old. Most people nowadays don't, think, don't know nothing about cream on milk. When 
you've got this whole generation of people that don't know nothing about it. They think milk is 2% water or 98% water. Yeah. But we see this old milk. The cream is what you make the butter out of. It's what you make the butter milk. It's what you make you know, make the biscuits with. It's, something, you know, it's, 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 it's the part of the milk that's only the part that's worth having. Because you don't drink that other stuff. You know, it's not for drinking. <laughs> not for me, anyhow. But see, and the thing is, if we could, if the devil keeps us from being anything less than what, he wins. If he keeps us from doing anything for God, he wins, church. We need to pray like we've never prayed. We need to believe like we've never believed. And we need to speak the word of God with authority. Richard, get a song. I, I think so much, so many times that we, we alter our lifestyle when sometimes the struggles that we're in, if we just push on through, would make us better people. Sometimes life ain't easy, you know. I was pretty rough around the edges when God saved me. That's putting it lightly. But Sister Diane, a lot of people said that I'd never make it. That I'd never stay stay true to salvation. That I'd never live my life for God because they all they could remember was my past. But they could they didn't they couldn't see my future. But God could. See, if the devil can make you think that you can't make it, that you've got to always stay the way you are, you will never strive to do any different. How many times do we settle for less? God's not panicking. Jesus never panicked. With his child. He was just going to take care of business, but he wants to take care of every, every aspect of our life. He cares. He cares. Jesus cares about the thing that you're walking through. Lord, you can do all things, and you do all things well. What about you this morning? Have you been in that place? You said, Lord, it's just not fair. Lord, it's just not fair because I've done all the right things, but I keep getting the wrong scenarios in my life. This morning, look in the eyes of Jesus and say, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, to make the right choices. I don't want to be this way no more. I don't want to walk this way no more. I've been in a mess. I've walked through some stuff. But, Lord, it seems like I keep falling back in it. What are you going to do? Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. God's on your side this morning. If you're in a struggle, God's with you. God's for you. If you're fighting the fight, keep fighting. Get close enough to Jesus for him to see what's wrong. Hear what he's saying. Give ear to him. God's speaking to you this morning. God's speaking to you. There's people under the sound of my voice that's let the devil try to steal their joy, steal their peace because of something that's went on in their life. Trying to steal their life. And God's saying, look to me. Look to me this morning. Would you stand to your feet? Lord, I believe.
Lord, I believe.